Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Pantano. I am Chief of Research for CLASP, and I'm here to uh, be your host for this webinar, um, Our Permanent Magnet Motors, the Next Game Changer in Energy Access. I'm joined by uh, a very good panel of experts to discuss, uh, discuss this technology and this opportunity. Um, and I'll be introducing the project and the speakers uh, as in the next couple of minutes. Next slide, please. Today's webinar is brought to you by the Efficiency for Access Coalition. Efficiency for Access, which I'll discuss more in just a moment, is centered upon the understanding that energy efficient, affordable, and high quality appliances de deliver myriad benefits to people and planet. Uh, in grid connected environments, efficient appliances help to reduce energy demand, saving households money, and contributing to climate change mitigation efforts. In areas without a stable grid connection, whether weak grid, off grid, efficient appliances play a critical role in reducing energy supply costs as they require smaller photovoltaic panels and battery capacity to operate. These benefits drive demand for energy and energy services and improve overall quality of life by increasing access to income generating activities, information, health services, and more. Next slide, please. <clears throat> because of their great potential to deliver social and economic impact, efficient appliances are a vehicle for broader sustainable development. Here you can see uh, a, a mapping uh, done by the Efficiency for Access Coalition of 10 off-grid appliances against the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals where we find overlap with 16 or 17 of these goals. So clearly the benefits are complex. Agriculture technology, just to take one example, can improve farmer productivity, which addresses SDG one, no poverty, and farm yields, SDG two, zero hunger, while reducing greenhouse gas emissions from diesel equipment, SDG 13, climate, and freeing up valuable time for women and girls to pursue additional education and employment opportunities which benefits SDG5, gender equality. As you'll see in our presentation today, solar water pumps uh, are critical to this opportunity and one area where permanent magnet motors can make a big difference. Next slide, please. About the coalition. So efficiency for access is comprised of 15 donor members supporting the development of 22 technologies across 44 countries. There's a network of 17 program partners conducting research and delivering programs, and a network of 30 plus inventors, investors interested in supporting off-grid appliances and productive use. CLASP, my organization, and the Energy Saving Trust serve as co-secretariat of the Efficiency for Access Coalition. The flagship program of this initiative, funded by UK Aid, is the Low Energy Inclusive Appliances Program and it serves as a primary vehicle for research and innovation in the off-grid appliance sector. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so why are we here to talk about permanent magnet motors? Motors are an important aspect uh, of many appliances, the prime mover in many cases. They determine the capabilities, power demand, energy consumption, and reliability of most off and weak grid products. Efficient appliances with efficient motors consume less energy, delivering cost savings to customers in the form of smaller system size or enabling the use of additional appliances. Last year, we partnered with Key Manifold Business Solutions to conduct one of the first comprehensive studies of permanent magnet motor applications in both off-grid and weak grid markets. Our report, which you can see the cover of here, outlines the benefits of adopting these motors estimates market size and potential in both South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, and identifies solutions for overcoming barriers to market growth, as our speakers today will discuss. Next slide. I'm joined today by four experts. Rahul Bhagdi is Managing Director and Co-Founder of P-Manifold, a strategic research and consulting company that helps industries and organizations innovate and transform their solutions, services, and business models for a better customer experience and market growth. He specializes in new technology and market development, business transformation, impact assessment, financial modeling, technology valuation, customer experience, econometrics, policy advocacy, and stakeholder engagement. Ankit Agarwal is a principal consultant at P-Manifold. 
Ankit has more than seven years of experience in the field of market research, financial modeling, business advisory, and strategic program management. He specializes in customer research, market research, monitoring, evaluation, analytics, project management, and stakeholder engagement. Dr. Evan Marimi is an energy expert with over 10 years of experience in Sub-Saharan Africa. He has a PhD in energy efficiency and demand side management has, and has been working on renewable energy, efficiency, energy access, and productive use of energy in developing nations focusing on both off, on-grid and off-grid areas. Evan is a lecturer at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology and a board member of the Kenya Green Building Society. Sharyar Mohammed is the founder and managing director of Harness Energy. Harness Energy aims to provide reliable and affordable solar products such as solar lanterns, solar home systems, and efficient appliances to low-income low income consumers across Pakistan. Harness Energy works with numerous manufacturers and microfinance institutions to effectively deliver these products at the last mile. Sharyar also leads Harness Energy's R&D project, sponsored by the Efficiency for Access Coalition, to develop a super-efficient rechargeable solar fan. All of these experts will describe uh, their experience with permanent magnet motors in relation to this report. Next slide, please. Uh, a bit of housekeeping. If uh, we are taking questions throughout this webinar, we encourage you to ask questions and request that you use the Q&A feature of the, the Zoom platform to do this. We have a session at the end of the webinar to handle questions. In order to use the Q&A feature, please select the Q&A button located on the Zoom webinar taskbar. You can type your question into the Q&A box. You can do this either as a public question uh, with your name visible or anonymously by selecting the checkbox. You can also like or comment on other questions throughout the course of the webinar. A transcript of the Q&A, as well as a recording of this webinar, will be shared following the call. And with this, I will turn it over to the team at P Manifold to begin a uh, discussion of our findings. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Uh, at P Manifold, we are glad to be partnering with CLASP and EST uh, for one of this most extensive uh, study undertaken on uh, energy efficient and permanent magnet motors driven appliances, covering household appliances, covering livelihood appliances, and the new wave of uh, transportation e-mobility for light electric two-wheelers and three-wheelers. Uh, so it has been a great journey and uh, we really hope uh, that this study uh, uh, allows the entire ecosystem to really leap forward to grow deeper into PM motor appliances. Uh, next, please. Uh, next. So let's very quickly understand uh, uh, some of the industrial technical jargon. What are permanent magnet motors? The industry uh, know most of the motor applications as BLDC, brushless DC motors. Though the name has DC motor into it, but uh, uh, technically speaking, the BLDC motors are also uh, AC motors. Yeah. And uh, we have chosen to use uh, uh, permanent magnet uh, uh, acronym in the overall report because BLDC is one of the permanent magnet motors, which definitely has high applications uh, in the appliances we have studied. But then there are other variant categories, uh, which are uh, the permanent magnet synchronous motors, even switch reluctance motors. Uh, why this motor allows a better construct uh, and better performance uh, over the uh, normal conventional use induction or universal motor. Uh, you can see from here, they employ permanent magnets uh, uh, as rotor and uh, uh, the stator has the windings. And uh, 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 this is uh, uh, the key difference. And uh, here you are using control. Uh, for uh, inducting the right electromagnetic uh, fields uh, and you have a high precision of the control. In case of the induction motor, uh, uh, you are using uh, 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 the slip uh, induced to drive the motor. And uh, while that is the fundamental to drive the motor, but that also uh, induces uh, uh, inefficiency. 
So uh, the electronic commutation that uh, comes with the use of the permanent uh, magnets uh, in PM motors is uh, really what drives uh, efficiency of the PM motors. And you will see different applications where PM motors, uh, you are able to control the speed with high precision because you have the control characteristics. For example, if you take a washing machine, which typically uh, uh, uses a universal motor for the kind of high speed uh, it needs uh, for the uh, spin and dry cycle. Uh, there, uh, uh, PM motor, uh, the normal induction motor will just have an on-off control through which you are driving uh, the applications. But with PM motor, even during a wash cycle, you can exert uh, different degrees of uh, uh, speed control. And that allows the new range of washing machines to have all those advanced controls and features which is not possible with a typical uh, uh, induction or a universal motor. There's a good uh, uh, new technology trends that are coming in PM motors. And the whole idea of this new trends are to improve the further performance and uh, help build more uh, uh, cost uh, uh, reductions in PM motors. Uh, some of the key ones uh, we have mentioned here, though this is not exhaustive list and you can look into the report. Uh, the, uh, the rare earth magnet uh, material which gets used in magnet, uh, there's a good amount of work to be converting them uh, into the ferrite magnets. Uh, the controllers, which currently are very different uh, and customized for applications to applications, there's a good case of developing some standardization and developing uh, ASICs uh, around it. Uh, currently, as shown in this diagram, you use uh, the Hall effect sensors uh, to actually uh, drive and control, but there are new techniques where uh, sensorless control techniques are getting availed and piloted, and that can further drive uh, some of the refinements and uh, cost reductions. Uh, so, uh, next slide, please. Now, those... Uh, uh, construct uh, that we just discussed, like how uh, uh, PM motor is different than induction and universal motors. It gives the advantage, uh, the construction of the motor is simpler, like uh, you have uh, less windings for uh, creating commutation. Uh, but because now you are doing electronic commutation, your controller uh, is complex. And that also is the reason of uh, uh, a little higher cost of this motors uh, compared to the other uh, two uh, motors, uh, which you see here in terms of the high cost. But uh, it turns into a high uh, motor efficiency advantage, high compactness, high power density. Uh, it allows a lot of uh, smart features because you are able to do very precision uh, 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 speed and torque controls under different operating uh, uh, regimes. Uh, and it, it, it allows you high versatility, like in case of induction motor, you are primarily doing on-off control, right, with a one kind of a motor. And so the, limit, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, usage is limited. In case uh, of the controller that comes with, uh, with the, the uh, PM motors, it allows you wide band of the speed and torque control. So hence its applications uh, are quite high and hence uh, high versatility and vibrations and noise further gets reduced uh, uh, over the uh, other motor types. Uh, this advantages, uh, they translate into uh, this key advantages when you are talking of uh, off-grid and weak-grid applications. Uh, the conditions there are uh, uh, more uh, uh, hard than normal use cases. And hence there's a strong case of uh, 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 PM motors use in off and weak-grid. Uh, in the report, we actually dive into a lot of details. Uh, what of the technical characteristics and usage uh, drives to some of the uh, uh, better features in terms of low power consumption. Uh, it, it requires, uh, uh, because you have a finer control uh, on the speeds and uh, you are using electronic commutation and not slip you can actually start the applications at quite low control currents, uh, rather than a high start current for starting torque in case of induction motor. So that reduces the power consumption because of its, again, uh, efficiency from commutation, uh, it uh, consumes less energy. 
uh, again because of the low start current you are able to drive it at lower voltage and it gives you a flexibility uh, both off and grid applications there are a lot of fluctuations in the voltage range so it becomes a, uh, a very good uh, applications uh, uh, in those uh, hard scenarios and uh, high robustness uh, uh, in terms you are reducing the uh, windings the construct side of it so it provides good reliability and easy maintenance next please Uh, Ankit, uh, my colleague, uh, will take you through further uh, uh, discussions across appliances. Ankit? Yeah, thanks, uh, Rahul, for uh, setting this context uh, on PM Motors architecture and their benefits. So in my presentation, I would be talking more at an appliance level. So as mentioned, uh, like uh, this report, uh, it has been divided primarily into three uh, appliance categories. So first is my household appliances, uh, which is primarily a fan, a refrigerator, washing machine, and also an air conditioner. Second is on more on the productive appliances, which includes my solar water pumps and deep freezer. And third is the transportation, which talks about electric two-wheeler and three-wheeler. So uh, one key message uh, we need to uh, really understand is that on the PM motor side, there is a price premium for a product which a consumer has to pay. And for that price premium, there is a overall energy savings and if you look into the overall total cost of ownership uh, that is significantly lower than the uh, counter or conventional uh, technology so with the uh, how the way the market has evolved over the years in some appliances you will see the overall price premium is uh, low uh, around like 10 to 12 percent for in case of a refrigerator or washing machine but in some appliances like ceiling fan or solar water pumps those uh, premium could be even up to 100 percent so yes there has to be a price premium which a consumer has to pay for uh, getting this premium technology which provides the benefits of energy savings and lower total cost of ownership second i think important point we need to understand uh, in most of the things, PM motor is just a fraction of the total cost of the overall appliance. It is uh, PM motor is helping you to drive the application, meet the objective, but it doesn't make a bigger chunk of overall appliance cost in most of the cases. So if I look at the ceiling fan, uh, typically in ceiling fan, the motor and the controller accounts 35 to 45%, where uh, it's a very high cost. So OEMs are making efforts to reduce those costs but still uh, there are certain challenges. But when if we compare to the other appliances like refrigerator, washing machine, or even air conditioner. So the motor cost is uh, uh, less than 10%, I would say for those appliances. So there are other components and the features that adds to the cost. So we need to understand uh, only driving the price of a PM motor down may not translate into a reduction in the price for a uh, many applications because in case of refrigerator washing machines already the volumes are very in millions similarly if we talk about the performance or energy efficiency yes definitely they do provide a good energy efficiency uh, savings up to 40 percent and even in some cases 60 percent is possible as rahul mentioned uh, key benefits is like uh, a better control on the speed uh, good uh, control over the voltage input voltage so one can start the uh, operate at a very low ac voltage as well appliances and if we look into the uh, payback point of view i think uh, the payback uh, for washing machine if we look uh, would be look into the higher side uh, because the operating hours are low in washing machine but uh, for other ceiling fan or direct cool refrigerators uh, so i think still it is better and again this paybacks are uh, really dependent upon the tariffs and what kind of operating hours uh, it has been assumed but typically to say the paybacks are uh, lucrative uh, if uh, like we look into the overall life cycle and the uh, cost and the rising rate tariff next slide please uh, second, now, if we look into the uh, uh, productive appliances, uh, which are solar water pumps and deep freezer, I think 
solar water pumps uh, definitely comes with a, a heavy price premium if we can compare to the general ac induction motor so i think those prime uh, price premium could range even from 50 to 100 110% now, if we look at uh, the solar water pump as a part of the total system cost, those are 15 to 20%. Then the remaining 80s are the PV module structures, balance of systems, installation, transportation. So those all accounts to the remaining 80%. Again, uh, benefits as cited uh, earlier uh, remain same for all the appliances. Uh, I think one thing important uh, way to really understand is why solar water pumps or PM motors have become uh, more preferred uh, in solar water pump is because they can even operate at a cloudy hours because uh, for uh, solar pumps to operate they need a, a starting voltage so because this uh, solar water pumps uh, this pm motors can start at a low voltage because of that uh, they are able to start e uh, in early morning hours compared to the ac motor for example, a PM motor can start at a 6.30 or 7, uh, 7 a.m. in the morning, but AC motor can take uh, start at a 7.30 or 8. So from that perspective, the need of the farmers are also getting met. So that's the reason if you look into the output, I think PM motors are able to deliver 9 to 10% higher water output compared to the induction motor. Again, paybacks uh, lucrative, I would say. It's a matter how you really see this uh, technology, but those are more favorable in terms of the overall adoption. And all. so electric two wheelers, three wheelers, we are already seeing a lower total cost of ownership. And also those provides you the overall benefits uh, on the PM motor. Next slide, please. Next. So I think uh, this slide is uh, uh, captures uh, the dynamics of uh, different appliances, I would say. So if you look into the fan side, fan has the highest volumes, almost 70 to 80, uh, 80 millions of uh, fans are sold in South Asia. But when I look into the penetration side, the penetration of BLDC or PM motor is less than 2% uh, in 2020. So there are again different dynamics like price and all which plays into the factor, but I think that market is also catching up. But when I look into the appliances like refrigerator or washing machine or air conditioner, they have a decent volumes, but their penetration is high. Uh, so in uh, like in my next slide, you will see, but uh, the uh, penetration of uh, PM motors in refrigerator, washing machine or air AC is al already almost 30 to 50 percent today. And the reason is the regulatory push to improve the energy efficiency of this appliances. Also, OEMs are finding a value to incorporate this technology. So just to give you an example, uh, incorporating a PM motor in refrigerator helps the OEMs because they are able to design or optimize their over uh, in terms of the lesser heat dissipation. So I think in refrigerator, washing machine, ACs, the penetration is already high. The volumes are already in millions and regulatory push is driving and definitely it's more organized market. Now coming to the solar water pumps, deep freezer, I think the market is in very uh, early stage. People are working to drive the volumes, but yeah, it's clear in solar water pumps, BLDC is being preferred. Uh, the market uh, meet or the farmer requirement is also, you know, pointing towards the design prim principles that supports uh, PM motors. Deep freezer, I think, uh, People are trying, there are cost factors, there are different, but uh, if you look into the overall deep freezer market, it is uh, growing very rapidly, almost, uh, I would say, uh, 1 million kind of a sales are already there in deep freezer in South Asia. So it's a growing market, but with the limited VLDC motor penetration because of the price sensitivity and the, uh, so you, we also need to understand deep freezer market is morely driven by the uh, uh, beverages industry. So they buy from the manufacturers and lease out or give to their retailers. So it's a very different bottle uh, game in terms of the deep freezer business. Two wheelers and three wheelers, again, uh, overall industry is, uh, uh, is uh, you know, uh, moving fast. So we will see ki how this two wheeler and three wheelers market is going to play down. But one thing is very clear, the uh, with the adoption of electric two-wheeler, 
or three wheeler the pm motors are going to be the biggest beneficiary so this is the overall sales in terms of the irrespective of motor technology next slide please now if we look into this penetration so fan is like 3% in next 5 years this uh, can reach to 7% now if i look into the refrigerator washing machine air conditioner already we are around uh, 33 to 65% so if i say refrigerator sales is almost uh 20 millions in south asia so 13 millions are already uh, using a pm motors one thing also you need to understand from the market sizes ki refrigerator may have two or three motors depending upon the type of refrigerator or washing machine can have one or two motors again depending upon the type of machine whether it is a semi automatic or fully automatic so in semi automatic generally two motors are used but uh, they do not use a bldc as in the current market scenario so washing machine here we are talking more from the fully automatic that uses one motor similarly air conditioner may have two or three motors uh, split will have a three windows will have a two so most of the market is towards split ac so again look from that perspective uh, ki how many motors can be really deployed if all the uh, primary motors are converted into bldc electric will uh, almost 1% share today but i think uh, the way the uh, policy push are happening across all the south asian market this market is bound to grow and we can really see the uh, market share of 9% electric vehicle among the two wheeler sales uh, by 2025 similarly for three wheelers so again as rahul mentioned improved energy efficiency uh, regulatory push through energy labeling superior performance higher reliability reliability cost savings are some of the uh, advantage this pm motor is providing and it is bound to grow uh, with this uh, i would like to invite my uh, research partner african research partner mr ivan who would be talking about the sub saharan african market yes um Thank you so much, Ankit, and thank you, Rahul, for giving us the introduction. So, um, if we may go to then, uh, yes. Uh, now, when we look at the market numbers for Sub-Saharan Africa, um, in general, most of the numbers um, are lower as compared to the numbers presented by Ankit on um, South Asia. Um, for instance, now when we look at the overall market, uh, the market trend we see that. Uh, the refrigerator market and the two-wheeler market is generally higher. Um, this is uh, looking at um, overall as compared to the other appliances. Um, the deep freezer market and the solar water pump market are normally uh, lower, as Ankit also alluded to. Um, this is due to these um, are young markets where um, the manufacturers are trying to push the numbers through. Uh, if you may go to the next one. Now, um, now getting into the penetration of uh, PM motors or uh, the permanent magnet motors among in these appliances, uh, we see that um, by 2025, only solar water pumps will have hit um, a, a mark of above 80% PM penetration. Um, this is because as early as now, um, most manufacturers are using PM motors mainly because of their uh, ability to work in weak or with weak power and hence take advantage of the intermittency of renewable energy, um, mostly from solar, solar, solar power. If you may go to the next one. Um, now, getting deeper into each of these appliances, uh, we see that as when you combine bo both markets, Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia markets, um, funds take the largest total market share um, of the household appliances that, of course, you are considering here. But they, they present the lowest PM penetration. Um, for instance, in Sub-Saharan Africa, this is about 4%. And the reason why this is, uh, the penetration is so low is because um, the permanent magnet motor accounts for almost half or let's say over 40% of the fund's total price. This makes the fund to be sold at a premium price. And when we look at the market that the fund is intended to serve, um, then um, it becomes impossible to push the numbers through, through there. However, PM adoption in the funds um, will continue to be adopted as we expect the 
uh, price of the PM motors to continue decreasing. And of course, there's going to be a gro continued growth in solar grid markets and pushed by the governments to have better energy efficiency. Our next up plans. Um, when you look at the refrigerators, um, this market, the permanent magnet penetration in this market is expected to grow by around 8% uh, in 2025 in Sub-Saharan Africa. And um, it's good to mention that uh, generally when you go to the supermarket, you'll find that uh, the refrigerators and ACs um, that have permanent patent portals are normally referred to as inverter refrigerators. They, the manufacturers put a symbol, they are called saying they have inverters. And um, in various regions in Sub-Saharan Africa, on average in Sub-Saharan Africa, we are talking about 21% market share, which is expected to grow up to around 35% 30, uh, by 2025. This growth is going to be driven by um, uh, ability to have value added features on um, the refrigerator such as quiet operations, uh, co consumer value and higher energy efficiency, uh, mainly driven by the governments or also uh, mean by the governments mainly through the MEPS uh, programs, minimum energy performance standards programs. Uh, if you may look at the next top plans. Um, now washing machines have um, limited adoption of pure motors, uh, especially when we talk of semi-automatic washing machines. However, uh, the fully automatic washing machines have uh, pure motors uh, penetration uh, getting better and better. Uh, we can see that for as at 2020, uh, fully automatic washing machines accounted for about 46% of the sales in the region um, and expect to grow at around uh, 7%. And uh, PM penetration is expected to be up about 51% by uh, right now to grow to up to 67% by 2025. Again, reasons for this um, penetration, increased adoption of the PM motors is also due to in, uh, increased disposable income uh, and also increased working population where people may want to have washing machines to help in their duties. Um, if you may look at the next plans, um, the ACs, um, the annual sales currently in Sub-Saharan Africa are around 2.6 million, uh, which could grow um, at, an, at an annual rate of about 10%. And split ACs uh, were discovered to be more popular than uh, window ACs in the region. Um, again, as I said, um, the ACs with uh, inverters, uh, the ones that have uh, permanent magnet motors, and um, the PM penetration is expected to grow from around 41% to 59% by 2025. Um, again, uh, with the factors mainly being due to value added features. Uh, if you may go to the next. Now, if you may look at the productive use appliances, um, solar water pumps um, for the region is key. We find that um, these ones, um, the penetration of pure motors is mainly due to high efficiency and also compatibility, as I said, because of um, the ability of the motor to continue uh, pumping water, our ability of the pump to continue pumping water even during cloudy uh, periods. Um, the PM penetration is estimated to be at 60% uh, as at 2020, and it, we are expecting it will reach 100% by 2025. Um, next up plans. And then uh, for the deep freezers, um, in sub-Saharan Africa, the numbers for deep freezers are not um, very well uh, documented. However, PM motor plants annual sales are expected to reach around 12,000 um, units by 2025 with an annual um, growth rate of about 19%. And um, the demand for PM motors in this market segment would be led by um, government uh, initiatives like policies as well as energy uh, labeling programs. Um, if you may go to the next plans. Now, uh, the last appliances I want to look at are on the transportation. Uh, and here we are considering electric two and three wheelers. So um, the normal two and three wheelers vehicle segments have seen phenomenal growth in the region. 
And this has been due to increasing population, uh, growing income, uh, both uh, in rural and urban areas. Of course, the aspect of increasing urbanization and poor public uh, transport networks in the region have been drivers uh, for the need uh, to have faster um, or easier modes of transport in two and three wheelers. So by 2025, uh, about 3.6 million two wheelers will be sold in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and it's good to mention that um, these vehicle segments are mostly used for commercial purposes, either as taxis or to transport goods uh, from one point to another. A three-wheeler market is still relatively low. And the two-wheeler um, PM market um, is expected to be the next frontier in the region, uh, um, with the key drivers being climate change awareness, uh, lower operating costs, favorable government policy and incentives, improved customer awareness, and um, of course, availability of financing. Um, if we may go to the next one. Next, please. Yes, so when we look at now um, all the, these appliances and how they are like the market potential of the appliances is in the region, um, we find that funds uh, market is highly price sensitive or very price sensitive, whereby uh, as much as um, the segment may want to adopt the, the funds, um, having the PM motor will um, really affect the price and then um, that affects, of course, the, um, the adaptability. Um, the ACs um, market is negligible in the region, mainly because, um, of course, we are looking at the, we, uh, the target market and um, funds would suffice. Um, same case with the washing machines. Um, it, uh, washing machines are not, um, are not really important or the the priority is not as high as compared to the other uh, appliances in the region. And therefore the, its market um, for the weak and off grid areas is also negligible. However, for the refrigerators, um, as much as the current adoption is, is uh, relatively low, um, the market potential is high because um, you know, the refrigerators are important in uh, cutting the post-harvest losses that is used in food storage as well as vaccine storage in uh, hospitals. Next, please. Yes, uh, when you look at productive use appliances, that is uh, solar water pumps, um, the current adoption is low, uh, of course, because of the cost, but however, the market potential is high because we have huge and irrigated uh, land in the region and most of the people are still relying on um, rain-fed agriculture. Um, and lastly, uh, when you look at the transportation, um, the current adop adoption rate is also low. Um, however, the market potential, especially for the two wheelers is um, high or medium, medium going to high. Uh, but this is, of course, uh, relative because of a number of factors um, that are important um, for the transportation in the region. Um, thank you. I think I want to hand over to Rahul. Thank you, uh, Ankit and uh, Ivan. Uh, this is a off-grid household case study. While we have talked about the high apply, overall appliance cost of uh, energy efficient uh, PM motor appliances, but when you actually apply this together with a right power system driven by solar in case of off-grid systems, this case study more detail into the report kind of tells you that the overall uh, capex investment also is lower because of the energy savings potential that uh, comes from this appliances. It also reduces the peak power capacity of your solar power design, which in turn also reduces the battery capacity of your design and the overall uh, cost of the power supply system of uh, uh, solar and battery put together is almost 40% lower than a normal conventional system which you will design with conventional appliances. And over to that, if you build the high cost of the appliances, you still see a case of 20% net savings. So even with existing high cost, there is a high case when a right integration of these appliances and power system solution is put together for off-grid appliances. Next, please. 
let's look into the barriers like uh, ivan and ankit uh, very clearly pointed out that high unit economics of the pm motor appliances that is acting as one barrier and uh, that is not necessarily coming only from the cost of pm motors but it's a basically differential pricing technique that oem has uh, uh, used uh, product performance gaps basically there are oems who have adapted using the pm or bldc motors but the price performance and the entire integration to derive the right benefits of this appliances in terms of cost reduction and other thing is still not achieved so that is what we meant that still with the bldc motor integration it has to be tightly controlled uh, lack of access to finance uh, uh, to the players who are uh, uh, providing the oems and the distributors uh, i think the working capital and retail consumer financing that's that's very important uh, barrier uh, customer side i think there uh, there are markets like asia where there is still uh, right promotions of energy efficient appliances but africa really has to catch up on it so this has to be really built into on the customer sides on the policy side uh, right demand aggregation right uh, uh, subsidies uh, will really help drive uh, this market especially when sub saharan africa is still very early stage so some learnings from uh, indian market uh, those those could really drive the markets uh, uh, very high standardization will play another important role uh, this is a, a new coming segment and uh, if the oems and the industry really work rightly at this phase then there are a lot of opportunities in standardizations which can uh, do that so this overall is acting as a barrier uh, the next slide uh, we will discuss like uh, what are the strategies how we can overcome this barriers next please so this is the overall value chain of uh, the pm motor appliances uh from product manufacturing to marketing sales and overall consumption and services part uh the report has detailed out on each of this uh, uh, interventions uh for lack of time i will not go into detail of this interventions but on the product design side we think uh, standardization uh and labeling program will really play a strong role uh to drive uh, cost reductions uh, uh by the oems and system integrators Uh, on the marketing distribution side we believe that uh, uh, a right kind of a demand aggregation model for example india has uh, esl uh, doing demand aggregations of the super energy efficient air conditioners uh, recently also for water pumps uh, so these are good uh, 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 case studies which can be replicated and further scaled up uh, uh, having a right policy incentives with right government attention for providing right kind of uh, uh, fiscal incentives uh, will really add up uh, uh, the adoptions uh, and retail financing i think that's definitely a very important area uh, so business model has really need to be looked into on the consumption side i think uh, uh, the ease of uh, uh, the overall serviceability of the motor is high but especially in the new markets we still need to have strong uh post uh, services and spare parts uh, develop uh, to give uh, and instill higher confidence into the customers and broadly i think the 10 and 11 are actually talking about how do we build strong consumer experience uh, through high product quality uh, through high uh, sales experience and overall usage and how do we build capacity across the channel where uh, uh, class uh, est and uh, the donors can really play a very very strong role so i think with this uh, uh, i uh, hand back to you stephen thank you uh, rahul uh, ankit and evan for your excellent presentation and as uh, rahul mentioned there's uh, plenty more detail in the report which we encourage everyone to download uh, and and read uh, if you have not done so already with this i will pass it over to shayar from harness energy thank you thank you steve Uh, hi everyone uh, so we are going to present a case study from the project that we've been doing uh, we recently got an rd project from the efficiency for access cooling call which was to develop a super efficient rechargeable solar fan and we are working on that so just to clarify who we are and uh, uh, i'll just uh, uh, clarify a couple of things before we move forward because uh, my case study and our experience is not as extensive as uh, 
uh, the case studies uh, highlighted before, because we'll be focusing exclusively on uh, fans and even in that category on stand fans, uh, solar stand fans. So just to give you an idea, uh, we are a company uh, focused on distribution of solar products uh, in uh, off-grid areas primarily, but Pakistan also has a very good bad grid population. So we work, uh, we cater to about 60 million people. That's the potential target market right now. We sell solar lanterns, uh, solar lighting kits, and solar home systems right now. Uh, to make sure that we do not compromise on customer service and quality, we currently only work with the uh, Verasol certified manufacturers and their products. Uh, but due to a couple of policy, uh, uh, a couple of government policies, we get uh, we sell our products with local fans. We do not get uh, fans from uh, China. So uh, we were founded in 2016, uh, and we have a very innovative business model. Uh, like I said, there's a bunch of products that we market and sell, and we partner up with microfinance institutions uh, to uh, to make uh, the uh, products more affordable. And uh, we basically outsource all consumer financing. So we take care of the procurement, and the distribution, the marketing, and the after-sale service. Uh, we are currently uh, one of the uh, main en off-grid energy experts in Pakistan. Uh, there's a couple of big uh, projects coming up in Pakistan where uh, the government uh, will be uh, giving out subsidized solar home systems. Uh, so fans are very relevant over there. And we're shortlisted for that as well. And like I said, we are working on, uh, currently working on Efficiency for Access cooling project as well. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? So the problem that we faced uh, initially and why we got the Efficiency for Access uh, applied for and got the project was that brushed motors, stand fans were, were really testing our nerves. It was really frustrating for us because uh, I'll just give you a, a background. We used to get uh, these uh, solar home systems from uh, China. We used to procure them uh, from a bunch of companies there, but we only got the base system, the solar panel and uh, the battery box. Fans, we had to use local ones. And when we uh, reached out to the big fan manufacturers in Pakistan, first, the problem was that most of the fan manufacturers, they catered to the grid connected or to 20 volt market. And uh, hardly a couple of manufacturers were focusing on solar fans. And even the ones that were, uh, they were doing like brushed motor fans. Uh, so you can just see a sample of the fan that uh, we were using and the motor that was powering it. Uh, because when it comes to fans, uh, there's only two things that matter. It's the blade design and the motor. So if you crack that uh, and if you uh, sort of uh, uh, deliver an airflow according to the market that you're working in, I think everything sounds good. And the motor and the blade design, they also consume the most resources in terms of time and money uh, when it comes to a fan's price. So the problem we started having was that this fan had really high surge current. I'll just give you an example. The battery box that we were using, uh, it had a specific, a dedicated fan port, but the cutoff current was about five amps, uh, which is pretty good uh, if you're using a BLDC, a brushless fan, or uh, any other uh, like low capacity, low power consuming fan. Five amps in 12 volt means 60 watts. So the manufacturer had done their bit right. But our fan, we monitored uh, pretty much every fan that we were bundling with it was consuming about seven to eight amps uh, for a few milliseconds. So our system would trip. Uh, so that was a huge, huge uh, problem for us. Uh, and then this fan, uh, because it, uh, the commutation is done by brushes, uh, we were seeing that there were frequent repairs coming up uh, because we couldn't really monitor how the people were using the fan in the field. So frequent repa repairs would come up. Uh, the performance was unstable uh, in technical jargon. You know, the waveform, the voltage was, uh, you know, up and down all the time. And uh, of course, we were using a barrel jack connector. Uh, so there was another sort of uh, connector joint over there as well that was creating some other issues. Uh, the fan is very inefficient. Uh, it was consuming about 30 to 32 watts of power. Um, so almost three amps of current per, uh, per hour of running. And of course, our battery sizing was uh, completely messed up. Uh, we thought that the fan would run for eight to 10 hours at night based on the sizing that we had done. But the battery sizing uh, uh, was smaller than what we were expecting uh, because of the fan. I mean, the battery was fine, but the fan was consuming so much power. So we were, uh, you know, people were like, our fan just automatically shuts uh, shuts off at night, and that is a terrible thing if you're selling off grid, if you're selling to off -grid customers. And of course, uh, these brushed fans they have a bad interoperability. Let's say, for example, these fans are sort of made for 
uh, the market where people would just connect them through those uh, crocodile clips to directly to a battery, to a lead-acid battery. There, they work fine. But when we try to plug them into like, solar home systems or other uh, battery boxes like that are lithium-ion battery, uh, battery packs, they would not work. Uh, uh, they would create a lot of problems for us. They would not work fine. So anyway, uh, after about a year or so of this frustration, we couldn't really find a stable solution to the problem. Because like I said, we were selling really high quality solar home systems. So we had to extend warranties to the customer. But with these fans, uh, warranty extension was a big hassle for us. Uh, and uh, so what we did was finally, we decided to jump into brushless fans. Uh, can we move to the next slide, please? And generally speaking, the umbrella of the motors is called uh, permanent magnet motors, but it fans from now on, I'll be referring it to BLDC or brushless DC motor. So uh, this is sort of like an example of a, a, a prototype that we've built. So the commutation system is very different. The motor, like you can see, the motor winding is uh, very different. The stator is different. There's a permanent magnet that's holding uh, the entire thing together. And the biggest advantage is that it comes with a PCBA. Uh, so once you have a controlling mechanism as flexible as a PCBA, you can do wonders uh, with the fan. And I'll just tell you the, some of the advantages that we uh, had uh, when working on the project and, uh, you know, going forward, but we plan to take it on as well. First, of course, there's no surge current. Uh, the fan actually gradually picks up power uh, rather than having those seven, eight uh, amps of milliseconds of uh, surge power. This fan has no such issues. So the fan that we were using on the same battery box that had a five amps current, uh, cutoff current, it was working perfectly fine with that. Uh, there's no repairs needed as such, as long as your uh, motor is properly tested from the manufacturer. Uh, there's a bunch of things you can do uh, it. You can, you know, make it safe to operate on low voltage. You can increase the RPM. You can do a bunch of stuff. Uh, and of course, you can also make it IoT interoperable. So you can include a small uh, Bluetooth uh, uh, sort of uh, Bluetooth hardware in the PCB that can tell you, that can send you data about how the customer is using a fan, what the problem is being created because of that. It's, it's, it's very uh, smart to use. It's uh, much less noisy than brushed fans which actually we observed that so people using these fan indoors as compared to uh, uh, people in the villages who most of uh, the time they're sleeping outdoors because of the hot weather uh, but for people who are using this indoors this is a big factor uh, that you know when they're watching tv when they're sleeping when they have guests over the fan should not be making noise and there's a huge difference in that uh, because brushless motors are very uh, comfortable for the ears uh, and uh, then the performance is very stable. Like I said, you can do a lot of control from the PCBA. So overall stability of the motor is very high. Uh, that's why you'll see that uh, when uh, you know um, a manufacturers advertise uh, inverter or DC inverter air conditioners or refrigerators, they extend like eight to 10 year warranties because they know things will not go wrong. And this is something that can completely change the fan industry. If you include uh, BLDC motors and fans regularly, you can extend five, 10 year warranties on the fans. Uh, they're much more efficient. And for me as a person, I think efficiency is, is uh, a target goal in itself. Uh, you should try to make everything more efficient, You know, more efficiently use your time, efficient appliances. Efficiency is an inherent good in itself. So these fans fulfill that property. And we saw that we got about six samples from various uh, uh, SHS manufacturers and the fan would work perfectly fine with all of them. Another factor that is not highlighted here is that BLDC motors uh, work uh, deliver the same performance no matter what kind of battery you're using. So let's say some uh, SHS, they use lithium ion battery packs would have a rated voltage of 11.1 .1 volts. Whereas uh, packs that use LFP batteries, they have 12.8 volts uh, rating, whereas standard dead acid batteries are 12 volts. So when you use a brush motor fan, the performance would vary. The RPM would uh, go down, go up, the airflow would be compromised. Whereas with PLDC motors, because there's a circuit controlling everything, you get the same performance. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, from the customer's perspective, I'll just try to wrap this up. Uh, like I said, uh, saving energy and energy efficiency is should be a goal for everyone from the individual to the government policy level. I think for when it comes to fans, because fans have a huge impact and like Rahul highlighted in South Asia, it's a huge, huge market. Like, uh, so if we can work on uh, behavior change in terms of uh, consumer marketing, the advantage of, uh, of BLDC fans, primarily around uh, cost and bill savings uh, on a monthly basis. 
and highlight better warranties and then you know uh, tell customers that uh, having a one time expenditure maybe even if it's higher than what would you have in uh, brush motors a one time higher expenditure is better than recurring repair expenditures so and highlight the efficiency and uh, like uh, evan and uh, ankit mentioned when you're talking about expanding rural energy access you have to use bldc motor fans because they completely uh, they're much more comfortable uh, to use uh, they require less repairs and all the uh, things that i just highlighted before and just at the bottom i've uh, I mentioned these four kinds of fans i haven't mentioned which one of them is bldc and which one is brushed motors uh, but when it comes to solar stand fans uh, the price is actually getting very competitive so fan number 2 uh, and fan number 4 are actually bldc motor fans brushless fans and you'll see that the, the huge difference between the airflow that they have. So the energy service value is overall really high. And specifically when it comes to our target market, stand fans, solar fans, the pricing is getting very competitive. Now, even uh, among this $29, $27, uh, you guys are right, uh, LDC motors and the controller, they comprise about 40% of the entire price of the appliance, but it's getting better. Maybe I think probably for ceiling fans, the premium is too high uh, right now. But anyway, so this was my two cents. And if we can move to the last slide, I think, uh, yeah. So in the efficiency for access cooling project that we're doing, uh, we tested a bunch of things. We got uh, various different kinds of blades, as you can see, uh, various angles. We used a bunch of different motors, Bellino motors, other brushed motors. We got a bunch of uh, brushless motors from China, and then we did some rigorous testing. And we have developed uh, a very good all-in-one uh, sort of uh, solar fan, stand fan that has an inbuilt LED and a mobile charging port. And we, uh, this is sort of the snapshot of the testing that we got done from a lab that it delivers a very good service value consuming only 21 watts of power. And now we're hoping to commercialize this very soon once our project ends to sell it to the bad grid market, to the off grid market, to the city urban market, and then also bundle it with a bunch of solar home systems. And uh, you guys probably will be hearing more about this when you get newsletters, uh, you know, in quarter three of this year. So, yeah, that's uh, my presentation and hope. Now, uh, looking forward to the Q and A. Thank you very much, uh, Shuyar. I would like to, uh, at this point, thank all of our uh, panelists for their excellent presentations and uh, of the data and analysis, as well as. Uh, experience using these products um, in application uh, that we're hoping to um, distribute much more widely and, and raise awareness of uh, through the Efficiency for Access Coalition. So at this point, we will move uh, to our Q&A session. Um, I'll ask all my panelists to turn on their cameras if they have not already. Um, we have uh, in the Q&A feature of our webinar, uh, we have had several questions asked and answered already, which you're welcome to peruse. I'll choose a few of those uh, for discussion now and uh, have some questions of my own for the panelists that I'll, I'll include as well. Uh, anyone who has questions uh, for any of our panelists, it's still welcome to uh, include those in the Q&A feature um, and we'll bring those into the last uh, few minutes of our time today. Uh, so let's start with some questions from the Q&A, um, and there, uh, I've tried to group them into uh, some themes here. So first, uh, there have been a series of questions around the supply side, uh, potential supply side challenges for both magnet materials and controllers, uh, as well as the motors themselves, um, questions about supply chain availability, um, both now and in the future. And I'd like to start with, uh, by directing this question to Rahul and Ankit uh, from P Manifold. Um, can, you, can you share a little bit of response around um, your perceptions on the future of the supply side for these products? Sure, uh, Stephen. Uh, I tried to answer a few of those questions in Q&A. Uh, yes, uh, magnets would form, uh, form like some 12 to 15 percent of the cost of uh, uh, the permanent magnet motors of different voltage rating, and uh, they they are important cost considerations. Uh, the earlier supply chains were uh, uh, the earlier supply chains were yes routed uh, more to China uh, because of the rare earth material availability, 
and there's lot of uh, things that has happened in uh, other magnet composites uh, including uh, the earlier ferrite magnets which which are evolving and uh, uh, there are players including like mahindra and mahindra in india who have uh, started uh, 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 magnet manufacturing and supplying to the uh, oems uh, so I, i i do see a trend that uh, 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 with the whole idea of de risking but also with the very increased penetration of uh, uh, the pm motors in the appliances uh, that some of this important uh, components and subsystems uh, uh, local manufacturing uh, uh, starts uh, picking up in the respective uh, countries and uh, definitely uh, from indian context for the kind of volumes we are seeing uh, there are players who have already started picking up on the components and sub components of uh, vldc motors manufacturing i i i see an increased uh, trend and definitely in terms of uh, 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 a right signaling coming from the government and right incentives uh, can actually speed up uh, this local supply chain and capacity build up in respective countries Uh, just to add uh, to rahul point uh, so like in india if i look into the vldc fan sales so almost 0.6 million units are being sold every year so uh, when we did the interaction with the uh, oem so once this uh, uh, sales hits around 1 million i think the market momentum will pick up at a country level as well and overall also like what we see as a part of the strategy for oems are uh, like uh, especially on the controller because once this volume becomes high this controller may be become an outsource to a third party because for uh, the manufacturer they might like to keep or uh, innovate more on the motor designs and all controller may become a very standard module which would be outsourced to the third party and become a non core competency once uh, on the fan side so i think uh, with volume all those de risking of the supply outsourcing to a more uh, uh, proven companies i think that system will uh, shape up uh, once volume so this is not a problem in case of uh, like uh, appliances like air conditioner or refrigerators where the volumes are already in millions but fan is still evolving so there is a doubt among the public or the customer or the oems like how this industry will shape up because of being a price sensitive as well so as rahul said government policy has to also support uh, in building this ecosystem thank you uh, for that and maybe i'll i'll turn next to sharyar as one who has lived and breathed uh, the supply chain of permanent magnet motors or tbldc motors in particular um what are your experiences with uh supply and sourcing um and i guess uh, extending that is there anything you think the international community should focus on to improve uh improve that in the future as you look to perhaps expand your product lines or or move into um new motor app, uh, new new applications new appliance applications for these motors Yeah thank you Stephen and actually i noticed that uh, about two to three uh, attendees have specifically asked a question similar to this as well uh, so definitely i think this is probably even more than the price premium itself this is probably the biggest uh, challenge right now why fans are not moving to vldc motors or permanent magnet motors uh, the survey that we have done from pakistan uh, people say that it's because of the price premium the customers are not willing to pay us the extra money that we put in but then i have also gradually seen over the past few years that people do when when you do marketing when you talk to people they are willing to pay on the price uh, the extra price sourcing is a major issue uh, i think all the rare earth mineral uh, metals and the pcb manufacturing itself even the basic board and then the magnets they are still for, for our project uh currently it's in the early stage but for the trial order everything was done in pakistan except for the motor the motor we sourced from china and we foresee uh similar numbers to what uh, ankit was telling about even though we're just one uh, sort of manufacturer we don't see ourselves getting into motor parts manufacturing into pakistan unless the demand is at least 18 to 20000 uh, units per month Uh, because it's just cheaper to get it from china the raw materials are there just like solar panels 
uh, for solar panels, the silicone, the wafer, everything is in China. So it's just cheaper to get it from there. Uh, I think going forward, uh, securing supply chain is something, uh, this two, again, two approaches to this uh, first, because uh, there are countries that don't have the raw materials, so they really can't do anything. So on that front, uh, I think it's better to focus on the cheaper opportunities that you have available from China. But secondly, at a policy level, uh, I think you could focus on something similar to what uh, President Biden did right now. There's a huge shortage of chips throughout the U.S. and uh, the industries from car to mobile phones to everyone is suffering. And now a country like India and Pakistan in terms of fans, uh, I'm not saying because of high tech uh, other appliances, but in terms of fan, you could do this. You could provide subsidies, you could provide uh, you know, uh, taxes, waiver for companies that set up initial plans for magnet and PCB manufacturing. I don't know how cost-effective that would be, but definitely a good, valid concern about this. Thank you for that. Um, any other comments from our panelists on this topic? Um, okay, maybe uh, I will go... Oh. Go ahead, please. I support uh, uh, Shreya's viewpoint. Uh, see, and it is not just for PM motors, but it is for other products like the right economics emerge with the right volume. And uh, uh, if as a startup, uh, you are working on few thousands of units, uh, there will be struggles in terms of uh, bringing the supply chains and getting the right pricing. Uh, because the, uh, the local ecosystem has not uh, built up that you will go into the market and you will find a player selling a very specific uh, size requirement and wattage rating of your BLDC motor. Uh, so I think like uh, only with right volumes uh, and really a focus, which now the PM motors have started getting. And I'm glad that this report can actually help the industry to look into the importance of this uh, uh, motorized applications and their energy efficiency through this route uh, to start uh, investing and building into uh, local ecosystems. Uh, starting with, uh, I would say like uh, the first right opportunity could be right uh, assembly of these motors. And uh, the second, once this is kind of building up, uh, then getting into the uh, magnet part of it as component industry suppliers. So it, 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 it's a right uh, signaling, uh, uh, Stefan, uh, which I believe that uh, industry needs. And we are at that threshold uh, for some of the uh, energy labeled appliances like what Ankit and Ivan presented, very good data points. Uh, like to a refrigerator OEM, it is making sense to use BLDC motors today. Yeah, because the motor uh, advantages translates into smaller, compact, less heat dissipating motor and that is turning them into reducing their other uh, uh, insulation, uh, piping, and other raw material cost. So the higher part of the cost of the BLDC motors get compensated by reduction in their other uh, overall bill of material. And that's why you see that a combination of uh, that regulation push for energy efficiency, plus this inherent uh, benefit that the industry is able to do with strong R&D is translating into higher penetration of these appliances with more and more choices given to the consumers. So I think it's a right uh, uh, balance uh, between some early fiscal incentives uh, provided by uh, government supported by organizations like class and agencies like ESL in Indian context. And, uh, but the OEMs, including startups really diving deeper into their uh, integration uh, of the appliances and the motors. I think that right combination and balance, I think uh, will really uh, 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 help the markets for a better improvement of these appliances. And Stephen, just, uh, just uh, a follow up on that. I think uh, it's very important to understand the link between uh, supply chain security and the end consumer price. You cannot make the decision uh, one way or the other. It has to be a very thought out decision. Let's say, for example, uh, like I'm getting a motor that costs me about like $8 or $10 uh, if I get it from China, let's say the cheapest option. Uh, if the government has to decide, if the government is deciding that they want to set up, encourage manufacturing of the motor in Pakistan, they'll of course they'll apply some taxes or duties on the motor import from China to encourage the local manufacturer. But then again, if the local manufacturer does not have a big enough scale, 
and that motor ends up costing me about $14, then the question is that why should the customer be bearing that extra $4 of cost? Uh, if even if you set up a manufacturing facility, so it's a very sort of sort of like an ethical constraint uh, concern as well. Should the government to inc- uh, to to sort of increase manufacturing capacity locally and securing the supply chain, should the government be putting the burden on the consumer in terms of higher pricing? So that's another. Yeah, that's a very good point, particularly for uh, price sensitive um, consumers in in rural areas. Um, Thank you all for for those uh, excellent responses. I'd like to move next to a discussion of behavior change and awareness. Um, There were some questions in the Q&A around consumer awareness and the impact uh, of of that, both in terms of uh, the enhanced features and functions uh, that come with permanent magnet motor driven appliances um, and the increased efficiency and and cost and energy savings. And maybe uh, Evan, uh, I'd like to ask you to start um, with your uh, your perceptions on that. You know, what are the how important is consumer perception? Um, what markets, uh, perhaps, is it most? Um, you know, what, what appliance markets is it most important to? Yes. Um, thanks, Stephen. Um, of course, uh, at the end of the day, these appliances are to be bought, and the perception, the population of the uh, consumers have towards an appliance uh, will determine, you know, whether it's going to be bought or not. And that means, again, uh, that will uh, then translate all the way back to the supply chain. Will the manufacturers uh, be able to sell these appliances? Um, if we look at, say, a case of sub-Saharan Africa, for example, um, even in the urban centers uh, where we'd say, you know, people have uh, better income, we are still quite price sensitive in that you'll find um, someone may walk, say, to a, to a supermarket with the intention of getting a refrigerator. And if they are not aware of the efficiency differences because of the permanent magnet motors or the inverters, as the manufacturers are calling them, then um, mostly we just look at the price. Um, here in Kenya, uh, to be more specific, you'll find a number of appliances. The government has uh, labeled, um, you know, has minimum energy performance standards for a number of appliances, including uh, refrigerators and ACs. But still, um, most of us don't know that those labels exist. And therefore, I'll just walk in, uh, look at what is the cheapest appliance, um, spend, think that I'm spending less in terms of acquisition, but in the long run, I'm going to spend more because I'll be paying more for energy. So um, public perception is key. And uh, this leads uh, to the next point. Um, It is then imperative on uh, anyone who's aware, Um, um, the government, um, the the, us, the consultants and the researchers to educate the public and let them know, look, um, the reason why there is a label on these appliances is there is something that is say like showing the energy consumption uh, estimated annual energy consumption, say, of the refrigerator or of the AC. So as much as this is more expensive uh, to buy, then you can see it's, it's going to cost you less over a long period of time. Uh, and then you can go ahead, you know, they also don't know things like um, um, the improved lifetime when you use the permanent magnet motors as compared to the conventional uh, motors. Uh, you find right now the manufacturers are... Um, comfortably giving you a warranty of up to 10 years on the compressor uh, for the fridge because they are confident that um, the use of permanent magnet motors um, really makes the equipment uh, very efficient. So um, perception and awareness are key to driving these appliances to be bought in the market. Maybe I'll pass this same question uh, to the team from uh, P Manifold. Um, can you speak a bit about uh, awareness and perception in India as relates to some of the appliances we studied? Sure, Stephen. Uh, uh, let me cite an example like the standards and labeling, I think, play a very, very important role, as what uh, Ivan also pointed. Uh, uh, to give you an example, uh, uh, India just did a re-rating of its uh, fan uh, star rating. Uh, earlier, like uh, the BLDC operated fan, 
and even a competing uh, uh, induction motor fan, they both were able to fit into the five star rating. Yeah. And uh, the way the BLDC fans were getting sold was like either they were calling themselves as higher than five star rating or someone was using six star rating. Uh, but for the end consumers, it is a five star rating label, right? And uh, if this is coming at a lower cost, then they will go with a normal fan. And uh, only with good bit of industry evidence and support to uh, the government and uh, uh, industry, uh, there was change. There was a re-rating of the star uh, thing done. So now only the, the new rating of uh, uh, energy consumption and uh, uh, airflow that ensures that only BLDC driven fans fits into the five star rating. Yeah. So the, the point that I want to say that uh, 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 labeling program has a very, very strong influence on the customer. Today, when a customer goes for a purchase, first it looks upon not energy efficiency, it first looks upon the features, right? And most of the cell that you will also see in the mass media, especially in television, uh, for higher price commodity goods like uh, refrigerator, air conditioning, washing machines, they don't sell uh, uh, a PM motor, right? They will sell a very new technology, freshness of food, uh, and some of those characteristics which will please the customer. And then the sideline item would be that it is also energy efficient. Similarly, the word inverter, the inverter technology has become uh, quite a bit uh, uh, played by media well that a consumer now understands that an inverter technology is higher efficient. They don't understand the logic behind it. But uh, if they are given a choice, they will say that, oh, okay, I want to, they will ask the quote for uh, or the price for an inverter AC or an inverter uh, refrigerator. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, the customer perception, which is well uh, formed, I would say from media, because these are all uh, uh, commoditized applications. Uh, so this has to really go hand in hand to really uh, drive a right perception uh, in the end user. And of course, at the end of the day, it will be all performance. Uh, and again, no one is really monitoring the performance on the energy efficiency. I bought a very uh, high energy efficient appliance. I paid that upfront money. I can afford it, but I haven't monitored it really, or does it really matter to me? But I think for the class of segment of the user, specifically off grids that we are saying, the case study that uh, I presented and also highlighted in the report, uh, I think it makes a very important case. We are talking of uh, uh, their overall, where the power uh, uh, availability and supply is a constraint, a right packaging of the solutions with your power supply, uh, which becomes a better cost optimized in CapEx, not just TCO advantage, but also in the upfront CapEx. I think that starts uh, creating new markets and uh, new business models. Uh, so awareness plays a very, very important role. And uh, I think a lot of attention needs to go in mass awareness. Like if uh, startup companies like Harness are trying to create those mass awareness by themselves, they would not be able to have the budget uh, for the competition that they have to even provide the products. So some of this uh, uh, right uh, campaigns driven through mass media, and that is one of a strong recommendation that we have put into the report. Uh, can really start making difference and uh, create uh, 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 and start creating demand. Uh, uh, Rahul, very fascinated by this. I'm just going to tell you how the manufacturers have used uh, this mass media campaigns in Pakistan. For the air conditioner, the focus has almost always been, they always use the word inverter, like you said, and the focus has been on lower costs, lower bills, because the power tariff in Pakistan is really high. Whereas when it comes to refrigerators, they still use the word inverter, but the focus is on, uh, it still works at 160, 170 volts because the grid is unstable. So the voltage goes down. So you don't want a food on your milk to go bad. So very fascinating to hear that for like the same two, uh, same country, different appliances, but the media campaign and the uh, sort of uh, punch words have been different. Yeah, the, the same oh, sure. terminology. Uh, also, here in the U.S., when you uh, when you go to purchase a new refrigerator, um, many of the most efficient share uh, inverter driven or inverter drive uh, on the label itself. It's not something I think that is. Uh, I've I've not seen it in a mass media campaign, uh, but certainly individual manufacturers are 
are using the terminology, uh, particularly for things like refrigerators and, and washing machines. Uh, just to, you know, uh, like uh, adding to this discussion, uh, primarily from the fan market, I would say, uh, because it's a, a price sensitive uh, overall market. So as we see, if uh, like the overall uh, PM motor controller almost accounts 30 to 40 percent of the appliance price. So like if I uh, consider an Indian market, so 3500 rupees is if a BLDC fan uh, with a air delivery of 220. So almost uh, 1200 or uh, 1000 to 1200 rupees is for fan and motor that's the overall and the basic entry level fans it starts at a 1000 rupees or 1200 rupees so there has to be a customer perception gap has also to be you know uh, brought to that level that the bldc fan cannot match the price of the induction motor fans maybe it could be in a, a medium price fans or a luxury, but not in a very uh, entry level fans price cannot be matched with the BLDC. So I think uh, since we are talking about the communication, so what I have seen in the Indian market is the OEMs are uh, playing on the warranties. So if I look into the induction motor, generally we talk about one year or two years warranty. But when it comes to fans, the manufacturers are offering longer warranties which says three years, five years. So I think that is a one communication has to be more on the warranties because people are like, you know, we are talking about the reliability service issues. So I think that gives a confidence if I'm able to give a longer warranties. So the, my product is more reliable. Second, I think since again, we are uh, talking about the off grid and all energy efficiency. So typically two BHK home uh, has a four, uh, will have a four to five ceiling fans. So now if I convert all these five ceiling fans into a BLDC fan, so Typically, if I look into the energy savings on an annual basis, it is an equivalent to a solar system of a half kilowatt system, which typically costs around uh, $600, $700. So I think one has to also look because uh, uh, solar systems are becoming popular. So if I adopt for a uh, energy efficient appliance right from the beginning, my need of the solar system also uh, reduces. So I think that also has to be worked out a two BHK converting into a BLDC fan. So I think I have already installed a rooftop system in my home at a very more cost effective. Thank you for that. And maybe uh, one last, uh, we're running towards the end of our time here. Um, I'll just uh, pass the last question to Sheryar again, given your experience uh, manufacturing these products, you presented, um, on one of your slides, the, the various costs, uh, I'm sorry, the various benefits of BLDC motors. Uh, some of those are benefits to you and your business, and some of those are benefits to the customer. And I wonder, you know, how challenging is it uh, in your experience, you know, to sort of make your customers aware of as much of those different value propositions as possible? Um, you've mentioned already that some are, um, you know, some are obvious and, and, and some maybe less so, you know, what are you doing uh, within your business to, to educate your, your customers on, on more than just the cost savings, let's say. Uh, this is, uh, this has been uh, challenging, Stephen, because we, the technical terminology that we're using here, we cannot use that with the customers uh, because the motor itself comes in a housing. So even if we tell customer that this is a better fan, DC inverter fan, they, they don't know and they don't want to know what that means. And the fan looks pretty much the same. So the, the thing that we pitch again is like Ankit said, better warranties. So right now, most uh, of the stand fan companies, solar fan companies who do sell uh, brush motor solar fans in the market, they give a warranty of between six months and one year. So we have we, we are planning on doing, when once we commercialize our fan, we're planning on doing two or three year warranties, depending on the area that we're working in. So better warranties, that sort of gives the customer a better, uh, a more comfortable, uh, he's more comfortable spending that price premium. Uh, and I think awareness wise, we try to uh, highlight the efficiency and the importance in terms of uh, uh, the overall package price. Uh, let's say the overall system is not costing you too much because let's say a, so a customer is purchasing a solar home system for $300. Our fan would make it $310, but they're paying it in monthly installments. So the premium goes down for them. And then we, the, the great thing uh, that we highlight for them is that your battery timing by using our fan for the same battery box will be much higher 
as compared to if you use a fan from another manufacturer. So I guess that the, the two key points are again, extended warranties and better uh, uh, battery timing. Uh, but again, <laughs> like it was mentioned by Rahul, we are a small company, we don't have the resources. We only do it to uh, you know, 20, 25, uh, 50 customers at a time at the meetings that we do. At the level of uh, reaching you know, 50 million people who are off-grid in bad grid and talking to them, conveying a message to them, of course, we can't do that. Just to add to the point, uh, Stephen, like uh, take an example of a soap and you have so many soap and shampoo advertisements while the functional requirement is remains the same, right? But it is, it is the right advertisement that uh, drives their sales and create the differentiation. Uh, so I, I am really a firm believer that a uh, uh, lot of our uh, uh, energy excess industry with uh, this high energy efficient appliances and innovative products, they actually need a very strong uh, 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 media and mass media advertisements, uh, uh, Stephen, to really make that difference on the customer side. There are good players like uh, Harness Energy and many others existing who have tested their products over years, uh, have got a good value proposition but uh, they, they cannot afford the uh, uh, marketing uh, at that level. So I think uh, 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 overall industry, I think we, we really need good marketeers and budget to doing this marketing and creating the uh, customer awareness and demand. And just a small uh, Stephen thought experiment, but let's imagine, so in Pakistan, uh, there's a big uh, difference between demand and supply of energy. Uh, so because of that, the tariff keeps on increasing and the government gives billions of rupees of subsidies every year. So let's just imagine out of those hundreds and billions, if they just dedicate a small percentage to either consumer awareness campaigns for BLDC fans, because fans are the biggest demand uh, consumers in energy, or they simply, for the first few million fans, they just subsidize the price to BLDC fan because then permanently the billing and the efficiency will improve and you know the government doesn't have to pay hundreds of billions of rupees every year to sort of, <laughs> because customers are using inefficient plan. Yeah, excellent points. Um, demand side management, <laughs> a big call for that. And we've got, um, I'll just highlight that there are, um, as with this study, many, technical studies and, and focuses on the efficiency and the technical aspects of different appliances and different um, energy access environments that are uh, captured within the Efficiency for Access program. Uh, we also are working uh, on some consumer research uh, and consumer awareness type efforts as well. Uh, those are uh, moving along and, and we continue to look for um, good ideas for ways to expand that. So. Uh, this uh, this webinar has been quite valuable for me personally. Uh, I want to thank all of our presenters for their excellent work uh, today, uh, both on the report and in these presentations. Uh, thank you to our attendees for your uh, very uh, pointed and, and excellent questions as well. Um, as a reminder, we'll be sharing uh, this webinar recording to all of our participants. Um, and we're always here uh, to answer more questions and uh, continue the dialogue. Our contact information uh, is here on this last slide if you'd like to get any more information. Um, and uh, I'll just close by uh, saying that we'll have a, a brief um, poll at the end of the webinar where we would really appreciate your feedback uh, on how we did. So thank you once again uh, to our presenters um, and we look forward to speaking with all of you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.